All right. So we're going to start talking about dimensional analysis. I'm going to start with just introducing the idea of a conversion factor. Um, Conversion factors are going to be really important for us this quarter, and I really hope that you watch this video and understand it and watch it again if you need to. We're going to use conversion factors an awful lot, so I'm going to take my time and try to really explain what's going on here. So first things first, kind of a setup. This isn't really introducing conversion factors yet, but to kind of give a background, it's important to understand how units are treated in mathematical operations. So, they're treated like the variable x. They can be uh, multiplied and squared and canceled out. So, in other words, if I have 10 centimeters times 10 centimeters, not only do I multiply the 4 times the 10 to get 40, I also have to take centimeters times centimeters and get centimeters squared. Right? This means that we now have a unit of area, not a unit of distance. So, what our units are have actually changed. Also, you can divide them out. So, 55 centimeters cubed by 11 centimeters, the, you know, 55 divided by 11 is, is 5, and notice I preserved how many significant figures we should have. Two significant figures, two significant figures, two significant figures. But more than that, centimeters cubed is centimeters times centimeters times centimeters, and we divide that by centimeters. We're left with two centimeters on top centimeters squared. Finally, this is where the conversion vectors are really coming into play here. If I take something like this, 150 milliliters times 6.80 grams per milliliter, right? So this is a compound unit here. I've got grams over milliliters. What happens is milliliters, remember, anything like this that's in the numerator is just over 1. So this is in the numerator. This is the denominator. Milliliters cancels and leaves us with grams. This is the key to understanding all of the mathy things, maybe not all, but most of the mathy things for most of this class. This is the thing you have to get. And this is why it's critical to write down your units. So, I mean, I'm multiplying 150 times 6.80. How many significant figures should I have? I should have three, because this has four, this has three. I'll explain why the one doesn't count later. But I ended up with three. This is, this is a trailing zero with no decimal point afterwards, so it's a, it's three significant figures. That zero doesn't count. Okay. Conversion factors. Big long definition. It's a ratio that relates one unit to another. Okay, that's great. Um, they're derived from this, the com equations that relate units. So we, we all know that one minute equals 60 seconds. Well, what I can do is I can actually divide um, they both describe the same amount of time. So what's important is to understand that one minute, what, on the either side of this equal sign, one minute and 60 seconds are the same thing, right? They're the same amount of time. So basic algebra lets me monkey around with this, right? I'll show that algebra, actually. If I divide both sides by one minute, right, what happens to this equation? I get the minute cancels out, I just get 1 equals 60 seconds over 1 minute, right? That's how the algebra, nothing cancels over here, this cancels over here. If I went the other way, though, right? If I divided both by 60 seconds, seconds cancels out, and I get 1 equals, right, 1 minute over 60 seconds. So notice that these are reciprocals of each other, which makes sense, because both of these equal 1, right? Both of them equal 1, and the reciprocal of 1 is 1. The critical key piece for any conversion factor is that it's a ratio that equals 1, where the new units and everything in the numerator equals the denominator. So 60 seconds is the same as a minute. One minute is the same as 60 seconds, so either one of these are acceptable conversion factors. If we want to think about a different unit, we could think about, say, uh, one foot. Well, what is one foot equal to? Well, you could say 12 inches. That's one thing it's equal to. You can make another conversion factor. One foot is three yards, right? And the reciprocal of both of these are valid. So these are all conversion factors. I can even do some weirder, a little bit of weirder stuff, and I'm only going to do weird stuff not to confuse you, but to kind of illustrate a point. 
if it's an acceptable conversion vector to say one foot equals 12 inches, because one foot and 12 inches are exactly the same thing, then I could say three feet equals 36 inches, and it's an equally valid conversion factor. As long as whatever is in the numerator is literally the same as whatever is in the denominator, you have a valid conversion factor. So I hope that makes sense. So as I said, the conversion factor equals 1. I think this is all just repeating what I said. So here's other valid conversion vectors. Um, 1,000 meters over a kilometer, 3,000 meters over 3 kilometers, all valid. OK, English to English conversion factors. Um, now, I'm not trying to, I'm delineating English to English and English to metric and metric to metric for only really one reason. And that is, all measurements or all conversion factors within a single um, system of measurement, so English to English conversion factors, all ha are considered to have an infinite number of significant figures. So really, it's, 12.0000000 forever inches in 1.0000000 feet, right? Forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Because they're exact. They're defined that way. And a foot is defined as being 12 inches exactly. So there's no, there's no um, give there. Now, there, while the ratio may be exact, our ability to measure that distance may not be exact. So here are, here are some conversion factors. You'll be happy to know I am not going to require you to memorize any of these. You don't have to memorize any of these. All you have to know is the metric uh, prefixes. OK. So um, metric to metric conversion factors are also exact. Now this is, these are what I am going to expect you to know. And this is where we apply the metric prefixes. So this is how I get these conversion factors. So remember from that big chart I showed you before, a kilometer equals 10 to the third meters, equals 1,000 meters. And a centigram, centi means 10 to the negative 2, equals 10 to the negative 2 grams. Therefore, the conversion factors we would make is 1 kilometer over 10 to the third meters, right? Or 10 to the third meters over 1 kilometer or one centigram over 10 to the negative two grams, or 10 to the negative two grams over one, uh, one centigram. Okay, so this, ma making these conversion factors usually throws people off because, I feel like I'm saying that a lot, but there's a lot of little pitfalls here. So, um, when you're making a conversion factor, um, for now, we're going to stick to conversion factors that only have um, one prefixed unit, unit with a prefix, and one unit without. So if I drew, um, if I had nanoliters and liters, right? So which one is my prefixed unit? It's nanoliters. When I say prefixed unit, sometimes people think I'm talking about the one. Sometimes people think I'm, what I'm about to do has to do with the one on the top, or has to do with which one's bigger or smaller. No, I'm always dealing with the one that has a prefix, that has a letter out in front. Okay, so we know from that chart that nano has a specific meaning. Do you remember? Nano means 10 to the negative 9. That's what nano means. Therefore, what I'm going to do, and I'm going to do this, I'm, the way, you can do this differently, but the way I'm going to do it, I'm going to stay consistent. And the way I'm going to do it is because, the reason I'm doing this way is because that way it's always the same. I never change anything up on you. You always, it's an easy way to know where the one goes. And the numbers match the numbers from that original chart that I showed you when we talked about metric system prefixes. The numbers I told you you had to memorize. So, nano, I'm going to put a one in front of the prefix. I always put a one in, in front of the prefix. It doesn't matter if the prefix is on the top, on the bottom, or if the prefix is bigger or smaller. It doesn't matter. If there's a prefix, I stick a one in front of it. In front of the base unit, I'm going to put the definition of the prefix, its opposite. So nano is up here, but I'm not going to put the definition of nano in front of it because that would be redundant. Nano already means 10 to the negative 9. I wouldn't put 10 to the negative 9 times net 10 to the negative 9 equals 1. That doesn't make any sense. 1 nano 10 to the negative 9 liter equals 10 to the negative 9 liters, right? And this works the other way. If I had micrograms, right? 
I'd put the one where. Let me draw that symbol correctly. I'd put the one where. Oh, and grams. I'd put the one in front of micro. I'd put 10 to the negative sixth up here because that's what micro means. If I had uh, kilometers and meters, I put the one in front of kilo. I put 10 to the third because that's the meaning of kilo. So I hope that makes sense. That's how I put these together. So it's also important to know that these are exact. The one is not, these are exact. We're not going to worry about any of the numbers here. Just, they have an infinite number of significant figures. So there we go. Oh, this is what I just said. Put a one in front of the prefix unit and the power of 10 associated with that prefix goes in front of the unprefixed base unit. OK, English to metric conversion factors. These relate English units to metric unit, and I'm not going to expect you to memorize any of them. They are established by measurement because the two systems of measurement were determined separately, and then we had to just measure how they work, how they work together. These conversion factors are inexact. They carry some degree of uncertainty, and they limit how many significant figures we have. These conversion factors will always be given to you. Now, if you see this, this has three significant figures. Here we go. Um, a lot of times, the way I will write it is I will not put the significant figures on the one. But I want you to understand that the one, so the one might be exact, and that's fine, but there's still an uncertainty in exactly how many grams are in exactly one, um, one pound. So I can say it's exactly one pound all I want, but I still don't know exactly how many grams are in it. I hope that makes sense. So this is where my uncertainty is. It doesn't matter. This is considered, an, this one is considered exact, but this still, there's uncertainty there. Now remember, English to English units are exact. Metric to metric units are exact, but, but converting between English and metric, they are inexact, with one important exception. There are exactly 2.54 centimeters in one inch. OK. So that's conversion factors. When we talk about dimensional analysis, we're going to use these conversion factors to convert units from one type to another.